Our scripture reading this morning comes from Romans uh, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Let no doubt, sorry, let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over and the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise Praise be God. God. So one of the things that I can remember hearing as a child uh, from primarily older people was this. Uh, Whenever I was getting in trouble, I can remember this saying, is this where you want to be when Jesus comes back? Is that what you want to be doing when Jesus comes back? And the answer to this question was always no. And this is not what I want to be doing when Jesus comes back. So one of the interesting things about our scripture today is in in this information, Paul talks about, in the second part of our reading, starting in verse 11, he's telling people that they need to wake up. You see, the hour of the coming of the Lord is closer now than when you first believed. And we know this is true simply from a straight linear concept of time, right? The day we believed has now gone by, and certainly the day of the Lord's coming is closer than it was on that first day. And I think the part that most people tend to focus on, especially those older folks that love to chide me as a child, in verse 12, the night is nearly over and the day is almost here. And when we discuss thoughts like this, the return of Jesus Christ, many non-believers will point to verses like this and they will say things like, well, where is he? He was supposed to come back, right? Haven't your people been saying now for 2,000 years that Jesus was coming again? So if it was true, wouldn't he have come back by now? And I think it is important for us to remember, and if you feel so bold to remind them, the concept of time to God is not the same as our concept of time. We know that the day is like a, th- a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. God is not bound by that same concept of time as we understand it as human beings. So now if we can wrap our minds around that thought, that the time is not the same for God as it is for us, we still have this question. Is Jesus coming back? In the light of recent events in the world, I've had several conversations with people around this topic. And they have asked me pretty directly, Eric, do you think the world is going to end? My response to them is what it would be to you right now. I don't think it is, but I don't know for sure. And I'm not worried about it. And if you're right with God, you shouldn't be worried about it either. I respond that I don't think it's going to end soon because I believe there's still a lot of things for us to do. And I think there's a lot of things that God personally still would like to see us all accomplish in this lifetime. And I say that because when I look around and I see things that are going on, that are sources of pain, poverty, injustice, and strife in the world, I know in my heart that God wants us to bring healing, love, and justice to those people. I respond that I don't think it is because I quite honestly am not a great interpreter of end time scripture. 
I struggle mightily with reading revelations and being able to interpret that. A lot of us do. And I respond that I don't think the world is any because sometimes when people ask that question of you, they want you to say yes to justify actions that might not be the best choices for them to make. There are numerous stories of people that have bought into the predictions uh, that the earth is going to end on such and such date. Um, it seems like every week there's a new one that comes out. It's going to be that date. Well, and that day passes. It's going to be that date and that day passes. So people do buy into that. And what they do is they go out, they spend all their money, they max out their credit cards, and then the world doesn't end. And then they're left with those consequences. And I don't want to be the one responsible for that. So as the Lord has not spoken to me directly, did told me that the date is gonna the date the world will end on this certain date, I don't think I'm qualified to tell you that it is gonna end on such a date. The second part of that comment that I say is I don't know for sure. And you see, I don't know that it's not going to end either. And when we look at the scripture for answers to these thoughts, the one that always uh, I'm always aware of is in Matthew uh, chapter 24, verses 43 to 44. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at the time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So this is why I don't know for sure, because the Bible tells us that you don't know what day the Lord is coming, but you better be ready when he does. Now, I know that when we talk about topics like this, it can be really uncomfortable for people. And I know that the idea of your mor mortality and the end of times can cause fears to rise in you. Uh, Carlin is one of those people, she does not like discussing this. That's not why she's not here today. Um, she already had to read my sermon, so she knew it was gonna happen, but she hates talking about things like that. Not that she's worried, but it just raises her anxiety level a little bit. So, I think it's important that you know this about me. I don't have a problem talking about this. It doesn't raise uh, my particular anxieties at all. Uh, and at times I have a pretty morbid sense of humor and there's always been a joke between our two families that my family is much more morbid in what we will discuss as opposed to what the Reichs would, so. But you see, in my family, there's a running joke and the joke is that all of my stories end with this phrase, and I almost died. And I tend to make fun of the times when I was truly in danger in life. And I think it's my way of coping with things uh, that were difficult that could have really turned out much worse. So a typical story for me goes something like this. When I was 14 years old, I was riding a three-wheeler three without a helmet. And I did not know what I was doing driving that three-wheeler. It was the first time I'd ever been on one. But I really wanted to impress my uh, then-girlfriend, happens to be my now wife. So I got on that three-wheeler and I hit the gas and I went flying down the road. Unfortunately, the handbrake on that three-wheeler didn't work. And nobody told me that it didn't work. And nobody told me that there was a foot brake as well that I could have hit. So I didn't know that about it. And I hit some gravel and I swerved off of the road and I hit the outside corner of a garage. And my head actually went past that garage corner and my shoulder slammed into that corner of that garage and I almost died. <laughs> and you see, that story should just be a warning about not being an idiot on a vehicle that you're unfamiliar with. But mostly for me, it's just something funny that happened when I was younger. And I also think that I've been comfortable about discussing death from an early age. You see, my mom is a nurse who's primarily worked in geriatrics her entire career. And it was not uncommon for me to go with her uh, to work and it was not uncommon for her to come home and talk about how one of her patients her favorite patients had passed away and i spent a lot of time with those people when i was little and so i got used to the idea that someone i go to visit in the nursing home was there one week and maybe gone the next so for me my mortality and discussing it in general it's never been a scary thing but if it is something that makes you feel uncomfortable, please bear with me to the end, I think, 
I can help you feel a little less anxious about it. So my other response to the question is, of uh, when the end times are going to happen is that I'm not overly concerned about it. I'm not overly concerned about it because I am sure of where I am going when this life is all over, whether it be the end of the world or just my end of my time here on earth. I fully put my trust into the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. So I say to you, if you've already asked Jesus into your heart, and if you've repented and turned away from your sin, then what do you have to fear? So for me, with that question settled of, is the world going to end and by general feelings, it doesn't matter? I'm left with this. What am I to do with the time that I have left? And this is where the first part of the scripture comes in today. In the beginning of what Paul writes, he is giving the early church instructions on how they should be living. Not in the future, but in the present. These things still apply to us today. Let no debt remain outstanding. Accept the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other command there may be are all summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor and therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. So what we are to do in the here and now is to love one another. We are to be doing our utmost with the time we have left on this earth to show others the love of Jesus Christ that he has shown us. And that, brothers and sisters, is where I want to be when Jesus Christ comes back. And that is where I want us all to be when Jesus Christ comes back. That's what I want to catch him, have him catch us doing. I want him to catch us in the act of selfless love for our neighbors. I want him to see us working hard to serve the forgotten. I want him to find us in fervent prayer for peace, and for justice for everyone. And I want him to discover us putting our faith into practice, making disciples for him. These are the things that I pray that we're going to be doing when he comes back. Whether it be today, tomorrow, or 2,000 years from now, that is what I want him to find us doing. Amen. Amen.